This is a close-up of the pattern I made for the uh, main foundry body. Uh, as you can see, it measures 36 and a quarter inches long. Uh, cut a strip eight and a half inches wide, and you notch back in one inch. Uh, two inch tabs, one inch spaced apart. Uh, on the uh, ends, have one of them be a cut, and over here, have one of them be a tab. And you'll see how it fits in from the video. And as far as the uh, circle for the top and the bottom, you could piece in the bottom, just cut it to fit once you get this. This is the most important part. Once you get this to fit, just cut it to fit. This is what we want the uh, inflow blanket that we're putting inside this to look like. We're going to add some stay wires to this. Uh, basically, it's a uh, 18 inch uh, gas welding rods to help hold the fire clay in place. We'll add a few along the top and also on the main part of the furnace. We're going to add stay wires along here and a few in the bottom. We'll do that simply by drilling a hole through it and doing the weld on the outside of the metal. Uh, this stuff, of course, can take the heat, so it doesn't need to be removed or anything. The reason for the holes in the bottom is we're trying to create a bearing surface for the fire clay so it, it's not just resting against this wool. Uh, even though we're going to, uh, this is a ramming type process where we'll be packing the uh, fire clay in, we still want to maintain a good bearing on the surface on the bottom and, uh, and also around the edges. So you want all of your workable surface to be solid fire clay. This is only being added for insulation purposes. Where the seam of the tank is, right here, I have cut some slots in there so we get also a center grab around the seam. We'll be welding a few wires right along this surface here uh, just to help stay it in place. And uh, I'll have that done in just a little while. Okay, now we're pretty well ready to start mixing the refractory cement. Uh, we've got the lid with the reinforcing wire welded in it. We just drilled a hole through it and welded the wire on the outside. We've got the uh, cardboard uh, tube in the center. Uh, we've got the uh, boundary all set up. We added some extra pins of wire to help hold in the top. Got our bearing surfaces. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix up the uh, cement. And by hand, we're going to pack it into all of our bearing surfaces first. And then we'll be adding a, uh, the center tube, which is already ready to go. Uh, once we pack the bottom and working up with them there. Uh, first we need to mix the fire clay. Uh, they, each manufacturer has a different uh, you know, water mixing requirements and I simply weighed the uh, water and weighed the clay. We'll be working in five pound lots and I'll be mixing in about uh, ten and three quarters of an ounce of water. And that's because I'm using KS4. It will vary by manufacturer. We mix the water into the fire clay. Actually, I see a little bit of this bone. And we just get it around. This is not like regular cement. Uh, this stuff is more of a, a ramming or packing type, type cement. It, uh, it won't pour like a regular concrete. Which may be And we just keep mixing it by hand until we get a nice even mix. And as you can see, it, just, it mix it to where it kind of just balls up in your hand. You don't really want it real soupy. Matter of fact, water is kind of critical with this. And it's important not, not to mix in too much water. got a pretty good mix here, falling up real nice. So now we're going to start packing it, uh, paying attention to the bearing surfaces that we've already got allowed with the insulin wool. Uh, we're going to pack those in, make sure we get a good surface there. That's the first thing we're going to do. So pay special attention to underneath the burner tube. That's going to be hard to get a good pack in there, so that needs to be done uh, by hand. Uh, too far along, or you may have a void there.
I've done is uh, I think just a piece of flashing notched out for the burner tube and stuck it in here to protect the uh, ends wool as I ram it. You know, I don't want to force any where it ends up on the outside of the uh, clay. So this will kind of help me and I'll be pulling it up as I move along. And we'll pull it up a little bit. Continue that process all around until you get up to the very top edge. Now, as you can see, we've got it filled all the way to the top. We spread it off the top just with a board, nothing fancy. And so, we've got the main part of the foundry finished. So now we're going to start working on the lid. Uh, for the lid, what we want to do, we want to pack around the the whole, uh, cardboard tube, the center hole, and also around the edges. And then we'll, we'll uh, smooth it off the top. And also, we will be adding a slight bevel around the center hole. We'll be doing that with just simply a board by hand. Okay, here's what we've got so far. We've got the, uh, all the metal fabricated. We've got the uh, refractory cement in along with the uh, backing of a uh, uh, ceramic blanket. And so we've got the base of the kiln. As you see it turned out pretty well. There's a little bit of residue from the cardboard which will burn off, no problem. Uh, we have a base on it, of course. And of course we have the lid made, which uh, also turned out pretty well. Now, it can be used in this manner, of course. I uh, just put the burner in there. You have to have a small crucible. It fits down in here, and we just put the lid on. But this is not really what we want. Uh, it's not quite as efficient. It needs to be a little taller to uh, take advantage of all of the heat that it produces. So I've, over the years, made several improvements to the original idea. Another thing is, if you use a small crucible and you only remove the lid, you have to have a set of lifting tongs, which are kind of like these tongs except for they, they turn the other direction and you reach in and grab it and pick it up and then you use the pouring tongs. Uh, that's an extra step and also you know you're dealing with a very small amount of aluminum uh, probably about 30 cubic inches. The improvement to the idea which we're going to make today is this. This is another tank it's been cut off. It's really the simplest part of all. It's really getting out to the easy part. We've got going to have the wool, uh, the uh, insulating blanket, and the fire clay. And this will allow you to drop the charge in once you're ready. Uh, the pour, simply remove the lid, remove the center section, and this allows much better. One step process. Also much more efficient. So that's what we're getting ready to do today. Okay, in order to make this, what we're going to do is measure from the bottom about three inches and make a mark. And then we're going to measure from that mark up eight and a quarter inches and mark it for the cutting. And this will be the section we will be using. We'll weld two handles onto the side of it. We'll add us uh, our ceramic blanket with it being an inch and away from both the top and the bottom. And then we'll put our tube liner in it and we'll pour the uh, refractory cement. And that's really much simpler than what we just did. In order to have this tank, I've uh, gone ahead and removed the paint sandblast that is the uh, part that we need. Uh, just to save some time here. And I've got the square sit. So what you do is make just a few marks as you go around on the uh, three inch mark. Save time. 
lashing makes a real good straight edge. Just right there. Line it up to the mark. And mark it. Like that all the way around. And get both marks marked and ready to go ahead and chop. This tank has been drained and rinsed three times so it's fully safe to be cut into. Now for making the handle we need to cut two six and a half pieces of iron pipe and two twenty inch sections of re rod. Okay, we've got the handles bent, and we just kind of line them up about two and a half inches from the top. It can be anything that you find comfortable, it doesn't really matter. Just try to get them as even as possible. We're going to cut two holes in this with a Dremel tool, and we're going to shove them through and we're going to weld them together. We're going to make sure they only stick about an inch inside, not past really the uh, insulation. Now we've got everything set up, we're just going to do a few spot welds, and then we'll do a solid weld on the inside and outside to put the handles on.